So basically what happened was, I had a dream. <laughs> Those are four words that will have your man nervous. I had a dream the night before, right, that Rob online cheated on me. Sophie leaves Rob after she finds out he's cheating on her through a dream. And I never check his phone, but I was like, let me just check because I had a dream about it. And I went on this one app and like basically, He's been getting, like, disgusting videos from other women. Hmm. Rob's friend is worried about Sophie cheating on him online. Tell me why I saw Sophie on Bumble. She was in there looking for a tenderoni and a date side of things, bro. He needs to be worried about his bestie. I'm not perfect, man. I'm not. Like, I'm not perfect, but I'm, I'm definitely not trying to f me with nobody else but you. I just want you. I want you in my life. Oh. Okay. Hey, 90 Day Fans fam, it's Melicia. Rob and Sophie have made it into the group chat. <laughs> this is my first time talking about them and I have a lot to say. So let's get into it. Just a little background to catch everyone up. Rob is 33 years old from Los Angeles and Sophie is 23 from London. These two come from totally different backgrounds. Sophie comes from an affluent family and Rob is out here just trying to make it. Oh my God. Recently, Sophie arrived in the US to start her 90 days with Rob. Stop. I'm very confused, what is going on? After he broke out in this cringy dance that he actually practiced, he proposed and Sophie said, I do. Yes, 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 yes thank you, yes. These two have been living in Rob's studio apartment that has an outhouse. <laughs> okay, it might not be an outhouse, but it's a bathroom that you have to go outside and use. In two in the morning, if I wanna pee and it's like raining, I've gotta walk out into the rain. Now, before we get into Rob cheating, their most recent issue came up when Sophie revealed she's not interested in getting pregnant, which blindsided Rob. Sophie just rocked my entire belief in, in her and what we can have. Why they didn't have this conversation before getting engaged? Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> this is 90 Day, after all. Obviously for me, it's like, I told you obviously when I was 15, I had the cyst. At the top of this week's episode, Sophie opens up to Rob about the life-saving surgery she had as a teenager and why it's led to her not wanting kids. Obviously for me, it's like, I told you obviously when I was 15, I had the cyst and that was on my ovary. So I had surgery to remove it. I kind of just accepted the fact that like, I don't want to be pregnant after that health scare. Cause like I could have died if they didn't remove that, you know? And it was like, it, or if I would have not had it taken out, then I wouldn't have been able to have kids. So it's kind of that scare was enough for me to be like, okay, like I can't carry a child. So I guess I'm not going to be a mom. Rob and Sophie then agree on the idea of possibly having a surrogate. Surrogacy sounds like the route that I'm more partial to. I think the surrogacy thing, like, I'd be okay with it. Which, I don't know if they thought that through. Because a surrogate is super expensive, and Rob seems to be pretty conservative with his money. And that's to say the least. I'm gonna bring you down to earth a little bit. You wanna be with me? I'm a down to earth person. So, yeah. Fast forward to the end of the episode, we see Sophie alone, and a message pops up on screen saying that she called the producers, saying she moved out of Rob's place the previous night and is now renting a spot. <sighs> At first, Sophie seems hesitant to tell the producers what went down between her and Rob, and as she starts to open up, you see why. Basically, um, so basically what happened was, I had a dream the night before, right, that Rob online cheated on me. Which, for those of you who don't know, it's something he has done before. I had a dream the night before, right, that Rob online cheated on me. So the next day, I just checked his phone. I never check his phone, but I was like, let me just check because I had a dream about it. I went on his Instagram, didn't find anything, and then I went on this one app and, like, basically, he's been getting, like, disgusting videos from other women. Don't play with it, don't play with it, don't play with it. Come on, baby, don't play with it. That intuition came through. And like asking for just like nudes and like the videos are disgusting. I wonder does she mean disgusting in terms of the video being inappropriate or disgusting meaning what she saw was real kinky. What would make this even worse is if he's been entertaining these women online while she's been with him in LA. 
like the videos are disgusting and he's like entertaining it. And I was just like, I found the videos and then I was just like, you need to drop me off. I don't even want to talk to you. Like, I just left. I just had to leave. I was packing my stuff. He was trying to stop me. Like, I just took what I could and I, and I left. I threw the ring. I didn't even have the ring anymore. I threw the ring. So yeah, right now, I'm him. Did any of you start thinking about your recent dreams? <laughs> I know I did. Similar to Sophie, I've had dreams that reveal things I need to be aware of. But I've also had dreams that were all over the place and just a manifestation of my fears and worries. So I say all that to say, don't have Sophie have you out here accusing your partner of cheating just because you had a dream. <laughs> I do believe that dreams can hold messages, but they're not always black and white. In Sophie's case, this time around, it was. You hurt me again, bro. I guess during their fight, Sophie thought to pull out her phone and record it for the show. I would love to know what her thought process was in that moment, but nevertheless, appreciate it. Because we get to see Rob's initial reaction to getting caught. I've been trying to be perfect, but I'm not perfect, man. I'm not, like, I'm not perfect, but I'm, I'm definitely not trying to be with nobody else but you. I just want you, I want you in my life. Robert. I'm assuming that's your government name. You say you only want Sophie, but the evidence, messages of you requesting sexual videos from other women says the contrary. You know, one of the things Rob said when we first met him was this. I wanted a fine woman. I don't know if he thought having a fine girl would satisfy him, but clearly it's not. He might have a problem. Based off what we've seen on 90 Day, there seems to be a deep internal struggle in the guy. He can come off as unmotivated. If we're going through hardships, he's like, ask your family for money, which does annoy me. Quick to anger. Like I cheated on you Why and are I you didn't. Getting angry at me? Because I don't like that. Every time you try to act like that was cheating, that's bull And just overall, kind of grumpy. What? Why are you angry at me? Why are you angry at me? Hey. Oh all that to say, I'm curious about what's driving his behavior as a whole. No wonder he never asked me for sexual videos. He's getting them from like, I don't know how many girls. It's just a lot and I just, he's disgusting right now and I just don't want to be like anywhere near him. Sophie goes on to say that some people might not view this as cheating, but to her it is. It is to me too. He did this before and I nearly broke up with him because it was like, just after a year, I think after we've been dated, he did the same thing and he was like ranking off back to us. Sorry, this is really explicit. It is. <laughs> but like he was, he was doing inappropriate stuff. The girls doing inappropriate stuff. And it's like I said, you can't hurt me like this again. If you do this, I'm leaving. So he knew what he was doing. On top of being heartbroken, Sophie feels lost. She's in this Airbnb that she's rented because she doesn't have anywhere to go or anyone to turn to in the States. In moments like this, I really appreciate the 90 Day production crew because at least she's not totally alone. That's one of the benefits of being on this show. You go live with someone you barely know in a foreign country, which could possibly be one of the most dangerous ideas, but more than likely you'll be safe because you're with the crew. They're like chaperones who don't interfere. I don't have anything, I don't even have a car. So it's like, I don't have anywhere to go. I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. And obviously, if I don't marry him, I have to go home. So I've given up everything for nothing. Girl, that doesn't mean stay. Sometimes you have to make a U-turn. She has to really ask herself, what's more important to her? Living in LA and marrying a man who quite frankly needs to get his stuff together or going back home to London where she'll at least have her peace and won't have to walk outside to the bathroom every night. I don't want to throw away my whole life that I've been trying to build to be in LA with Rob. It's like, I've got, I have to give up that. I have to give up that dream. And he just gets to live the same life with no consequences. He doesn't have to leave. He just gets to do what he's doing. You know, sometimes you have to pull out the handy dandy pros and cons list. As a viewer, the only pro I see is Sophie living in sunny Southern California. But the cons? One, Rob wants children, and she seemingly doesn't. Because of the fact that I don't want to get pregnant, it's I've never really thought about kids kind of type thing. Two, she's living in an uncomfortable environment. Three, with a man who isn't even treating her well, he's cheating on her. I get making sacrifices when the love is good, 
but it's not. Now, if she has other aspirations in Los Angeles outside of Rob that she's not talking about, that's another conversation. I just feel very trapped and very alone and what he's done to me, it's like I'm hurt, but at the same time, it's like, I don't have anywhere to go and I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. And I just feel very, it's a very lonely feeling and it's very difficult to process. And my mind's just trying to like block the pain, but it's, it is a bit difficult. <clears throat> I'm just really trying not to think about it. It's hot. That's the thing, it's like it's not even that it's hurt me. It's that I don't what am I supposed to do now? Yeah. I also find it interesting that they're both hiding secrets from each other. Well, Rob's secret is out now, but Sophie is bisexual. I've always known that I was attracted to women because my first crush when I was like five, six years old was a girl. And the man she's engaged to marry has no clue. That being said, I understand why Sophie is heartbroken. But at the same time, I'm learning that if you want your partner to be honest and loyal, you have to practice those things too. And to take it even deeper, you have to practice being honest with you and being loyal to yourself, staying true to you. I believe our relationships tend to mirror whatever is going on inside of us. Forget Rob betraying her. Is Sophie betraying herself by not fully owning who she is and how she wants to express herself? Like I probably should tell Rob soon that I'm bisexual. I've just been putting it off for a bit. I'm not saying that she's the cause for Rob's behavior. No, not at all. All I'm saying, in my opinion, is that she has to give herself the same treatment she wants to receive from Rob. What is this? All right, next week, a moment I've been waiting for since the season's trailer dropped. Girl, no one is prepared for this. Jasmine finds lip gloss in Gino's car. What is this? I have no idea how they got there or how long it's been. I have learned to read Gino. I can tell he's guilty of You're a shit No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm not yes, you are. That's not cheating. I want to go home. I want to go home. Oh, I can't wait to see. All right, 90 Day Fans fam, make sure you stick with ET because we are covering it all. I will see you next time.